Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for July 8th. My name is Carla Kuhn and I'm a worship leader at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in the Green Lake neighborhood of Seattle. And I'm really glad you could join me for prayer this evening. So if you want to go ahead and get out your book of common prayer, we're going to go ahead and start on page 115 this evening. Um, so let's just take a moment and realize we are in the presence of God and just gather ourselves together in this moment. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord, Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We will continue and pray, O Gracious Light, together on page 118. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm today is Psalm 12 through 14 on page 597. So I'll give you a second to turn there now. So Psalms 12 through 14 on page 597. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue, they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that utter proud boasts. Those who say, with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side and that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O oh Lord my God, 
Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy says I have prevailed over him and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord most high. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers? who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble with fear because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortune of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson today is going to be from Deuteronomy. So, a reading from Deuteronomy. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan, in the wilderness on the plain opposite Suf, between Haran and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizab. By the way of Mount Sur, it takes 11 days to reach Kadesh Bar Barne from Horeb. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the Israelites just as the Lord had commanded him to speak to them. This was after he defeated King Sion of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and in Irdra. Beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to expound this law as follows. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed too long. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Resume your journey and go into the hill country of the Amorites, as well as into neighboring regions, the Arab, the hill country, the Shephelah, the Negba, and the sea coast, and the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land I swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give to them and their descendants after them. And that time I said to you, I am unable by myself to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you so that today you are as numerous as the stars in heaven. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised you. But how can I bear the heavy burden of your disputes all by myself? Choose for each of your tribes individuals who are wise, discerning, and reputable to be your leaders. You answered me, the plan you have proposed is a good one. So I took the leaders of your tribes, wise and reputable individuals, and installed them as leaders over you, commanders of the thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifty, commanders of tens, and officials throughout your tribes. I charged your judges at that time. Give the members of your community a fair hearing and judge rightly between one person and another, whether citizen or resident alien. You must not be partial in judging. Hear out the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone for the judgment is God's. Any case that is too hard for you, bring to me and I will hear it. So I charge you at the time with all things that you should do. 
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will continue our prayer this evening on page 120 and pray the song of Simeon together. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, oh, hey, sorry about that. Um, you know, our scripture reading for today got me thinking about this book that I have called Moses on Management by David Barron and Lynette Padua. And in the chapter titled, Let Others Share Your Burden, they actually talk about the scripture passage that we had today from Deuteronomy, which, if you're tracking right, is really kind of a summation of Exodus 18. So uh, they go on to say in this book, and I quote, Moses hadn't journeyed with the Israelites more than a few months before the task began to overwhelm him. But like many leaders, he was unaware of the approaching burnout. Yeah, Moses had a management problem in our scripture reading today. If you were to put it in, in popular and contemporary terms, his organization was way too flat. And like any middle manager, he had to get some, some structure in there because managing and leading through the wilderness is hard. And so it was really his father-in-law, Jethro in Exodus, who kind of nudged him along and said, you need to kind of set up this structure of all these tribal leaders to help you along. Um, again, in a more contemporary term, he sets that up and then he begins to delegate what they're going to do. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word delegate, it certainly rings up a certain connotation. And, and, and I personally like the notion of sharing the burden, sharing the burden of leading, because leading in the wilderness is hard. And it still is hard. Ask any governor in the United States leading in the wilderness of a viral pandemic and the pandemic of racial injustice is hard. Ask hospital administrators and civic leaders leading in the wilderness is hard. Ask rectors of parishes, ask teachers, ask parents. Leading in the wilderness is hard. Ask yourself. Because leading in the wilderness is hard. The first step that Moses takes at the nudging of his father-in-law in Exodus is to recognize that he cannot do it alone. And that when you distribute that burden out amongst many, it is much lighter. Moses could not do it alone because leading in the wilderness is hard. And I would say that we cannot do it alone. Christ calls us to, to him with that promise of carrying our burdens and carrying what is hard for us. And it's through his love and compassion that we, we walk that hard path together. Because leading in the wilderness is hard. And in turn, we as disciples of Christ could then go out and give space for others to share their burden. Share their burden and just listen. Sometimes it's an it's just giving space and asking somebody how they're doing or what's going on. And sharing that burden with them can be as simple as writing them a note, having them over for a socially distant gathering, wearing a mask. These are all 
different ways we share the burden. Because at the end of the day, when Moses finally recognized he could not do it alone, in the, in the, in the passage in Exodus, at the end it says, Jethro implores Moses and says, you have to do this because if you don't, no one's really going to survive the wilderness. And like then, as we are now, it will be together a sharing each other's burdens and looking to Christ to help share our burdens that we too will make it through the wilderness together. And we'll continue evening prayer tonight on page 120 together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. This evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Together we respond. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening in his hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I offer this time for your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, silently or aloud.
I'd like to pray for all leaders in our world, our country, our cities, our churches, who bear that burden of leadership. And I'd also like to pray for all those who share in that burden as we move forward um, through two pandemics, that of COVID and the devastating effects of racism. I'd like to pray for the safety of all who are beginning to venture out um, into our communities, that they are safe, they are smart, and they are acting in ways that demonstrate our love for one another. We will continue on page 125 and pray the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with the truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from, the, from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer tonight. I hope that your week is going well. I hope that the rest of your week continues to be blessed. Stay safe and take care. <laughs>